What's the biggest change or development that you've seen in the learning industry since you updated the book in 2010? Well, I'd say two. One is this extension in space. So now a lot of the most interesting projects are these big collaborative projects, like I was talking about in the food industry. You know, many, many different enterprises, many different companies and NGOs working together to really uh, assure that a, a, a food supply chain is viable for the next 20 or 30 years. Uh, for example, the way coffee is sourced today is a big collaborative effort and even big companies like Starbucks have been real leaders. They were part of the food um, global uh, foods um, global food lab, which is what that network is called, global sustainable food lab, or just sustainable food lab, I guess is what they call it today. Um, and the coffee industry now, you know, they're they're much more on top of, you know, what's the impact of of this choice or this choice or this choice of of coffee for those f coffee growing communities, and of course for the the, the ecologies within which they operate. Um, so that's been a big change, this extension to looking at larger systems, which was always the intent, but I would say was not being done very well at all. Mm -hmm. I'll just take a very different example. Uh, Nike was one of the founders of the Sustainability Consortium, which was one of the precursors of the food lab, it, it, when we were looking at all kinds of different industries, not just food. Um, and Nike's main focus was on waste and toxicity. You know, how to design their whole business so as to steadily reduce waste, reduce toxicity, and reduce energy use and water use. All products in Nike now are rated based on those four elements today. Really? really? Yeah. Um, but today, Nike, the most <laughs> fascinating scale project in the world that I know of right now, is Nike, Reebok, Adidas, and Puma, the four largest athletic shoe makers in the world, working with Greenpeace and actually several other NGOs to eliminate, systematically identify and eliminate all the key toxins in the totality of the China supply chain. Wow. In the apparel industry. They have a system map that covers a wall because they're tracking all these different sources of toxins. And, and Greenpeace really pushed them to do this, but in quiet, in, in behind the scenes, it was Nike saying yes please push us because Nike is a world leader in this area mm -hmm. and um, they said the only way we'll ever do it is to get all the big buyers who are obviously intense competitors working together because together they create enough signals to radiate throughout the whole of this vast supply network literally tens of thousands when you trace it in the lingo of the industry the first tier second tier third tier suppliers it gets to be tens of thousands of enterprises all over China and in fact all over Southeast Asia who are supplying the suppliers of the suppliers you know right back to the chemical producers of something that gets used in a process to treat leather or plastic or whatever um, and to, to think that you could actually achieve that level of collaboration um, it would have been unthinkable uh, you know a decade ago but that's exactly what's going on today it's called the road to zero you can I think Google that today probably Greenpeace okay. maintains the website and it's to get to zero toxins in the totality of this supply chain so that's been a huge development this extension 